Welcome back to our digital playground where we're making web scraping as easy as finding Waldo in an empty room. <laughs> there he is. We're not just talking theory here. We're getting our hands dirty with real practical applications to help you become an expert. Today, we're diving into the world of using the Python package Beautiful Soup to extract valuable data from static and server-side rendered websites with speed and ease. We're starting with the basics before diving into a sea of engaging activities where you'll get to flex your newfound web scraping skills. Let's quickly review what static and server-side rendered websites are and why we can use Beautiful Soup to scrape both of them. Static websites are just normal HTML files that are served to the user exactly as they're stored on the server. This means user-specific information is not included in the response. Sites that don't require content to change and can typically be served statically are sites like portfolio websites, blogs, landing pages, documentation, and much more. A concrete example of this is my security blog, The Response Times, which is a fully static site. An important thing to note is that many websites are static HTML but use JavaScript to make requests for additional data. This type of site is out of scope for this lesson, but check out Lesson 1, Introduction to Forging API Requests in the series to learn more. On the other hand, server-side rendered sites, or SSR for short, use their servers to inject data into HTML before directly sending it in the response to the client. This is a very widely used approach, and the data injected varies, but could be trending topics, your messages with another user, the current weather, and much more. One advantage of SSR is that it returns HTML that the browser can render without doing any extra work. It's popular because it decreases the page load time for the end user, especially if they're viewing the website on a computationally weak device. Since both these types of websites return HTML with the data that we want to extract in the response, we just need an easy way to parse the HTML and select the data we want. Luckily, there's tons of Python packages that allow us to do just this. In this video, we'll be using Beautiful Soup. But first, we'll quickly review HTML basics so that we can understand how to select the data that we want to extract. HTML is a markup language that's used to structure and display content on the web. The most important part of HTML are called tags. Tags build up the structure of the website and each of them has a slightly different purpose and are usually rendered differently by the browser. All tags start and end with the caret symbols. An example of an opening tag is the paragraph tag, shown here. Tags must be closed using forward slash before the tag name. To close a paragraph tag, we would use this. Anything between the opening and closing tag is considered content in the element. If we insert text between the tags, the browser will render it as a paragraph. The content of the tag in this example is welcome to everything web scraping. An example of how different tags are rendered differently by the browser is the header tags. They change the font size and they range from h1 being the largest to h6 being the smallest. I've linked a list of all the HTML tags in the description if you're interested. Tags can also have attributes which are used to change how a tag is rendered or to provide additional information about the tag. Attributes are always specified in the opening tag and are made up of a name and a value. For example, the image tag is used to render an image on the browser and has multiple attributes that change how the image is displayed. The source attribute is used to specify the URL of the image that should be displayed. The width and height attributes are used to specify the width and height of the image in pixels. Finally, the alt attribute is used to specify the text that should appear if the image can't be loaded, which is often used for accessibility purposes. All tags have an optional attribute called ID. This can be especially useful for web scraping because in well-designed websites, the ID attribute is unique across all elements on the page. This allows us to easily select the element we want to extract without having to worry about any other elements on the page. Another useful attribute is class. Classes apply user-defined styles known as CSS that change how an element looks. When an ID doesn't exist, this is another pretty good way to select different elements on the page, but multiple elements can have the same classes. You don't need to know CSS for this lesson, but here's a basic example that changes the color of the text and the background color of the paragraph tag. But that's enough HTML. Let's start the fun stuff and start extracting data from websites using Beautiful Soup. To run the code for this video, you'll need to visit the lesson's GitHub page at the top of the description and follow the instructions to get the website running. I've also linked a video in the description right below that that walks you through the process. If it's not already installed, you'll need to install Beautiful Soup using the command on screen. The second package we'll be using is called requests, which will let us make HTTP requests to the website we want to scrape. Use this to install it. For now, let's just print out the HTML of our website in the console. First, we import requests and define where our website's running, in this case, localhost 3000. Then we use requests.get with our website URL to make the request. Lastly, we can print out the HTML tag using r.txt. 
If we run this code, we can see the HTML of our website is printed out to the console. Now that we have access to the HTML in Python, we can use Beautiful Soup to parse it out. First, we import Beautiful Soup from the BS4 package. Then, we create a Beautiful Soup object called Soup by passing in the raw HTML as well as telling Beautiful Soup to use the HTML parser. Then, we can print out the soup object to see what it looks like. Our first goal using this HTML is to extract the prices on the home page. To do this, we need to look at the HTML and figure out the best way to select the elements with beautiful soup. I personally prefer to use the developer tools in my browser, but you can also view the source code of the page by right clicking and selecting view page source. With using developer tools, you want to find the element that you want to extract and right click on it, then click inspect. After doing this, on the right side of your screen, we see the HTML with the element we selected highlighted. This makes it a lot easier to read the HTML and figure out how to select it with Beautiful Soup. Let's start by extracting just the first price on this page. However you choose to view the HTML, you should see something like this. We see the price is in a P tag without a class or ID. This makes it a little bit more difficult, especially since there's multiple P tags, so we need to find a smarter way to select the right one. To do this, we'll select the div tag with the class product details. Then we'll use the find method on our soup object and tell it we're looking for a div with the class product details. Let's just print this out to make sure we have the right one. After running it, we get this, which is exactly what we want. But now we need to select the p tag with the price. Let's first just try selecting the first p tag. But unfortunately, this gives us the wrong tag. This is because the method only returns the first element it finds. We can select all children of an element with the find all method, which we can loop over with this. Or we can use the find children method, which returns a list of all of the children. These give us the same results, but just in different formats. I'll be using find children for convenience. Now we can select the price by selecting the second element in the list. This gives us the element we want, but there's still some extra HTML. The last step is stripping out these extra HTML tags with the getText method. Finally, this gives us $3.13, which is what we want. In the previous code, we were only getting the first price, but now we want to get all the prices. To do this, we can just use the find all method and find all of the divs with the product detail class. Then we can use the same code as before to extract the price for each one, which gives us the solution. Now that we've done a little bit of web scraping together, I've made some activities that I encourage you to try on your own to practice. The activities are on the Lessons GitHub page, and some of them have bonus challenges that are designed to help you see some direct applications of web scraping. I definitely encourage you to at least read them, even if you don't have the time to do them. The rest of the lesson will be a walkthrough of the solutions, so if you want to try them on your own, you should stop watching now and come back later. But be sure to subscribe and leave a like before you go if you've enjoyed so far. The last tip I'll share before we get into the solutions is that tools like ChatGPT do a pretty good job of finding out how to select elements with Beautiful Soup. So if you're struggling on how to select an element, you can try using a tool like ChatGPT and provide it with the source HTML, and hopefully it'll give you a good solution. Although it's still important to understand how to select elements by yourself, because sometimes the tools don't work and often aren't the most efficient or stable way to select elements, especially if you're doing a lot of web scraping at scale. Okay, now let's dive into the solutions. If you're following along, open up the activities.py file and let's get started. The first activity asks us to get all of the product titles and their prices. If we open up the website, one of the titles is Sasha the Deer with the price $3.13, so let's inspect the title. We see that the title is also under the same product details div that we used earlier in the demo, so let's start with a cleaner version of that code. Since the title is just in an H4 tag under the product details, we can easily select it by just using find to look for an H4 tag and extracting the text from it with get text. If we print out the title and price, we see that we have the right answers, just not in the right format for the test. So let's just quickly return the information in the format we want. And there we go, that's the solution. For the second solution, we're trying to get the colors of each product. In the browser, if we inspect one of the colors, we see how the colors are defined in the HTML. Unfortunately, it's not under the product details class, so we'll need to find another way to select all of the products. If we keep going up the tags in the inspector, we see that the li tag seems to represent one of these products and has a parent tag of ul with the class product list. So let's select that parent in Python. Then we can iterate over all of the child li elements. If we go back to the browser, we remember that the colors are under the style picker class, which we can select with this. 
To get the colors out of the style picker, we have to iterate over the children. Then we can extract the style attribute, which contains our color with .get followed by the attribute name, in this case, style. We can extract the hex color from the rest of the CSS by splitting after the colon. If we run this, we see it errors out. And going back to the website, we see that there's some empty li elements at the bottom. When web scraping, there's so many edge cases that end up popping up. So be careful to watch out for ones like this. We'll just skip the product if the style picker is none, since that means it's an invalid product. Finally, we can get the title like we've done before, and then we can add the product title and the hex codes to the results array like this. And there's the solution. For the third solution, our goal here is to find the materials that each product is made of. On the website, if we click on one of the products, we can see the material is displayed here under a P tag with an ID of material. The tricky part of this activity is that we need to make an additional HTML request for each product we run into. The A tag in HTML is used to specify links on the page. If we look at the home page on each product, we see a few A tags that all point to the same product page. If we start with similar code to the previous solution, for each product, we just need to select the A tag and extract the href value, which points to the page. Again, there's some elements that don't have a tags, so we'll just ignore those since they're invalid. The href attribute leaves out the website's URL, so let's add that in before making another HTML request for the products page, which then we can parse with beautiful soup like we did earlier. Then we can select the p tag with the ID of material to extract the materials for this product before finally putting it all together in the format we want. That's another solution down. Solution four asks us to sort the products by their star count. If we go back to the products page, we can see the stars are displayed in a div with class star rating, and each star is in a span with the class checked if it's a full star. Starting with similar code to the previous solution, we can select the star container with the class star rating. Then we can select all of the spans under that with the class checked. Taking the length of that gives us the number of full stars the product has. Then we can get the product title and add both the title and the star count to a list of tuples. Then we can sort the list by star count and return the list of tuples. And there we go. That's another solution down. Exercise five just asks us to check if a product is available or not. On the website, we see Sasha the deer is available, but on Gerald the giraffe, it says it's out of stock. Inspecting the out of stock button, we see that it's a div with the class button and has the text out of stock. Starting from code similar to the previous solution, we select the div tag and get the text from it. If the button's text is out of stock, then we know it's not available. Otherwise, we'll consider it as available. Then we just have to add the product's title and the availability to the results list. You're doing great. Just one more solution to go. For the last activity, it asks us to scrape all reviews for a product. If we scroll down on the product's page, we can see all of the reviews the product has. The cool thing about this activity is that these are all real reviews from real people, so we're actually scraping real data that people have written. We notice that each review has the class product rating and is contained in a div with the class product ratings. Starting with the same code as before, we'll first select the parent div, then iterate over each review. On the website, we can see that each review has a rating under the class rating number, a title under rating title, and the full review text under the class rating review. We can select and extract the text from each of these like so, and that's all the information we need from each review, but I'm going to format the information how the test expects it to be returned, but you can do whatever you want with it. The bonus for this activity, which I won't be covering, is since these are real reviews, you can run meaningful full sentiment analysis on them to see if the average product review is positive or negative, beyond just the star count. On the lessons readme, I've linked a different tutorial on how to do sentiment analysis with Python if you're interested. That's the end. Woo. In this lesson, we learned how to web scrape static and server-side rendered websites using Beautiful Soup. If you learned something new, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and check out the playlist for more web scraping tutorials. Until next time, I'm David Tether. And this is Everything Web Scraping.